Welcome to the wonderful world of blood donation. Around the world, giving blood is seen as a symbol of generosity, one of the noblest acts in modern society. But the reality is different altogether. Healthcare is the perfect money-making industry. Our willingness to pay for available therapies, basically, especially for our loved ones, knows no bounds. At the heart of this business, plasma, a yellow liquid rich in proteins. It's the main component of blood. It's more expensive than oil. C'est l'exploitation de l'homme par l'homme. Le terme qui est utilisé par certains, c'est le nouveau cannibalisme. Est-ce qu'on accepte au prix d'un marchandage ce système qui permet à un individu riche de profiter du pauvre? I'm like a car. I'm giving you abomination. It almost killed me, so I don't want to do that no more. No, it's dangerous. We decided to explore a little-known area within the health industry the blood trade. Our investigation took us to France, Germany, and the US. They don't like us to interview their donors. Yeah, man, you know why? They doing something they ain't doing right. They need to stop it. Public want to know. Today, Carlos is donating blood. Despite his busy job, he's a regular blood donor at the Red Cross Center in Lausanne. Carlos sees his act as a sign of commitment to the community. More than 100 million donations are collected each year worldwide. In 2015, the Swiss Red Cross registered 311,000 donations. The figure diminishes each year and they're constantly seeking new donors. Their message is clear. Giving blood saves lives. C'est important pour moi de venir euh, parce que je sais que je peux aider des malades. C'est vraiment le, le point important pour moi. C'est ma façon de pouvoir aider des gens. Je trouve que c'est quand même quelque chose de, de beau de pouvoir donner quelque chose, en tout cas qui est une partie de soi-même. Je vous mets à 16 heures et puis ben vous venez quand vous pouvez, il n'y a pas de souci. Blood is a quite peculiar juice, said Faust's devil with glee, but he's not the only one to be interested. Health is also an industry and blood donations are subject to the laws of the market. Voilà, ça coule bien. C'est tout. Oui, volontiers. Before giving blood, these Swiss donors must complete a medical questionnaire and give their informed consent. In particular, there is one line at the end of the form, a sentence in small letters. I am aware that some components of my donation may be used for the production of drugs. Only a few donors read this line, though it's crucial. In reality, most of the donated blood is sold to private companies, something the Red Cross doesn't advertise. We receive about 320.000 blood spenders per year. That are full blood spenders. That means in these blood spenders are all the components drin, also the plasma. Okay, and what do they do with blood plasma? Im Gegensatz zu den anderen Blutbestandteilen ist es beim Plasma so, dass nur etwa 20 Prozent dieser Menge direkt in den Spitälern gebraucht werden. In den Spitälern gebraucht heißt für Patienten, die einen großen Blutverlust haben und diesen, äh, dieses Volumen ersetzt halten müssen. Der restliche Anteil, das sind fast 80 Prozent, geht in die sogenannte äh, Fraktionier. Industrie, das sind Firmen, die daraus stabile Blutprodukte und Medikamente herstellen. The plasma fractionation industry. These are the pharmaceutical companies that buy 80,000 liters of plasma from the Red Cross each year. The humanitarian institution makes nearly 10 million Swiss francs from this sale. Are the donors aware of it? Qu'est-ce que vous savez sur ce que va devenir le sang que vous venez de donner? Bien, je dois dire que je suis plutôt innocent par rapport à ça. Euh, je me renseigne pas énormément par rapport à ce genre de, de choses. Euh, quand j'entends je, le mot don du sang, 
eh bien, c'est le fait que je vais donner de mon sang. Et puis après, ce que ce sang va devenir, eh bien, j'ose espérer qu'il soit utilisé dans les hôpitaux qui sont pas très loin de chez nous. Euh, donc c'est un peu l'image que j'ai, moi, du don du sang. C'est une image un peu innocente. First discovery, the majority of the donor's blood is sold to pharmaceutical industries. The industry is so interested in Carlos's blood for a specific reason. Its liquid part, called plasma, contains sought-after proteins. They are used to make very expensive and profitable drugs. Who are the players behind this industry? We decided to track the plasma trade. Welcome to CSL Plasma. Typically, 57% of our blood volume is made up of plasma. Plasma is a strong colored liquid portion of the whole blood that transports water and nutrients to all cells in the body. It is composed of approximately 90% water and 10% protein. Plasma also the plasma industry is huge and a handful of companies share the world market. Baxter in the USA, CSL Bearing in Australia, Gerfels in Spain, and the company Octopharma in Switzerland, which we discover through these promotional films. Octopharma's raw material is produced by the perfect bioreactor, developed over millions of years of evolution, the human body. For these companies, plasma is nothing but a raw material, and very lucrative too. The professional term is fractionation, the name of the procedure that transforms donors' plasma into drugs. To do this, they collect, freeze and mix thousands of liters of human plasma. These companies control a market which is worth $17 billion and growing steadily. Wolfgang Marger, the president and co-founder of Octopharma, is a very discreet person. Forbes estimates his fortune at $6 billion. This is one of his very rare public appearances. How do you see the future developing? These products are life-saving drugs, and they will be required for some patient groups as a lifelong therapy. And presumably they're covered by most insurance yes, companies. Yes, they have to be, as they're very expensive. But that is also the other part of the, of the, same, of the same coin. There are many countries who simply cannot afford to provide this kind of level of treatment to their population, yet at least. And it sounds easy when you say, well, plasma should be available enough. You just go to your population, your country, you collect the plasma, and then you will be in good shape when you make those products. That's not the case. Now a truly global organization, Octopharma remains a family business dedicated to always going further to empower more patients to go further in their life adventure. Throughout the world, the lives of millions of patients depend on these treatments. Tamara is one of them. Today, she's receiving her treatment at a hospital in Bern. <coughs> Since childhood, she suffers from an immune deficiency that causes repeated infections. Hey, Mama. Hey, Mama. Mama. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to her plasma-based treatment, Tamara's life has become easier. So much so that it would be difficult for her to go without. Before I got the infusion, I couldn't say for two years that I was healthy or that it was good for me. And that has changed already, just on the infection. I come all three weeks here. Also die Infusion bekommen. Ja. Und es geht dann einfach pro Mal geht es circa drei bis vier Stunden. Also es sind eigentlich Immunglobulin. Also sprich eigentlich wie. Also das ist ja ein wichtiger Teil der Immunabwehr, die man, man hat. Und die Antikörper, die man selber nicht kann produzieren kann, werden einfach von außen zugeführt. Geht's? Mhm. Also, ich arbeite in der Apotheke und darum kenne ich so ein bisschen die Preise. <lacht> und ähm, die grosse Flasche ist, glaube ich, um die 1500 Franken und die kleinere ist so um die 1000. Um. Also, total heute ist. Es ist ca. 4000 Franken. Also, ich bin um jeden froh, der geht Blut spenden geht. Natürlich nicht nur wegen, wegen unseren Medikamenten, sondern allgemein. Und ähm, ja, ich mache die Leute immer wieder ein bisschen darauf aufmerksam. Also, wir sind halt dort ein bisschen. Eben, 
ähm, im Verwandtenkreis oder so. Oder ja, bist du schon Blut spenden oder bei, vor allem bei Bekannten, das mal wieder hart ansprechen. Weil, ähm, ja, ich glaube, die Leute muss man ein sensibilisieren auf das. Where is her life-changing drug from? Where is the blood in the drug from? From Swiss donors? Denken Sie, das kommt aus Schweizer Blutplasma? Äh, auch nicht. Ich weiß nicht. Ich habe gesagt, nein. Oder nicht nur. The plasma's origin isn't public information. It's a trade secret. We decide to visit Swiss Medic. This is the Swiss authority in charge of drug control, including their origins. These experts analyze plasma samples each week, as well as the blood-derived products that are used in hospitals. Is that the plasma? Yeah, that's the plasma pool. So, in each drop, there is a aliquot of the plasma pool. In the context of the police bei der Plasmapool-Testung müssen uns die Firmen auch diese, diese Pool-Aliquots einreichen, wo wir dann die Tests eben auf HIV, Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C durchführen. Mm -hmm. Est-ce qu'on peut regarder, d'où viennent ces lots de plasma? De quel pays? Wir können das nachschauen, ja. Ouais. ja. Mais c'est pas pour le film. On peut pas filmer la 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 CU 1445. Kansas City, Chattanooga, Lansing, Louisville. Da, da sieht man jetzt, wie viele Spenden aus oui. welchem Zentrum stammen. C'est bizarre. Ja, und alle diese Zentren, die sind im Plasma Master File zugelassen von Swiss Medic. Daher dürfen sie jetzt bei uns eingereicht werden in den Puls zur Prüfung. Cleveland. West 25th Street, 48 Donner. Cleveland, United States. Okay. We decided to travel there. <laughs> West 25th Street, the address listed in Swiss Medics Register. Some of the plasma used in the drug sold in Switzerland comes from here. This blood collection center belongs to the Australian company CSL. Donate plasma, save lives, earn up to $200 a month. There are donor ads everywhere which tell us that the volunteers are paid for their blood. As opposed to most European countries, the USA allows compensation for blood donations. This practice is legal. We enter the premises, which are under heavy surveillance, impossible to speak with the staff. Yeah, you can't just come and take pictures, you gotta do it the right way. No, no, we do it from the outside, from the... Okay, across the, the street. Across, yeah, across the, the street, street, you can, that right, you know. Yeah. The center is in one of the city's poorest neighborhoods. Cleveland is a devastated city. The financial crisis of 2008 was a fatal blow. Pastor Lester Williams knows the reality of life in this neighborhood. Many of his church followers sell their plasma. Well, I guess uh, it all works out. It, it's legal, so I don't have a problem with that if that's what people decide to do. But what is strange is that the companies, they continue to call this a donation. Mm -hmm. But 
What what is a donation when when you pay someone? It's not a donation. It's not it's not free. That's what a donation should be. It should be free. Evidently, they're exploiting. They're exploiting people in whatever their uh, conditions is economically, and uh, so it's actually not a donation. They're actually paying for it. Now, are they charging, again, I'm going to ask you this question, are they charging Switzerland for the plasma? Yes. So they're think. making money on it in, in both ways. They're, they're, you know, Because the little that they're giving to these people is not very much. In Cleveland, all the market leaders are represented. CSL, Grifols, we also find Okta Pharma, the Swiss company which produces Tamara's drug. I like your tattoos. Thanks. Man, those are cool. Mark goes there twice a week to sell his plasma. I'm on a budget right now where I'm on 32 bucks for rent, $45 for the phone, $50 a month for my insurance. So, so I'd have to say I'm in a ballpark around Two to 225 a month. And, and I found out that I can with the plasma, you know, or, you know, that's the problem when you're on tight budget. It's a fragile thing, to, you know. We wanted to go inside with him to speak with the people in charge. This turned out to be impossible. The hostility increased the closer we got to the center. We're on public property. Is this private property? That is not. Please. Follow my friend. I'm leaving. Okay. So we questioned donors outside, in the parking lot. Yeah, at first it was just kind of like an extra money thing, you know, just to get a little money on the side, you know, to help me with bills and stuff. And then it just kind of, you know, I became a regular. First, when you first start, you get 50 dollars your first five times as a new customer then after that on tuesdays or thursdays any two days of the week you get twenty dollars and then it go up to forty dollars how long have you been donating plasma uh now for a year Every started week? yep two times a week that's a lot yes but it ain't bad it's cool it help out it's good for other families it's good for my family too in the end of it so one hand wash the other hand <laughs> No one does it for any kind of moral reasons. No one does it for the moral. No one, no one does this because it helps people. It's just one of the side effects is that it helps people. So. The procedure is well established. As soon as the plasma bottle is full, the donor's credit card is credited. Here we go, right here. Now, this is the plasma of blood bank card. It's almost like a like a like a regular uh, Visa card, you know what I'm saying? They put the uh, money on your card immediately after you get done. Uh, sometimes they forget to put the money on your card, and you got to call that number on your card, you know, because if you don't call that number on your card and stuff, you're going to be without money. After the economic crisis, donations soared in the USA, going from 15 million in 2007 to 32 million in 2014. Luke Schaefer is a sociologist at Michigan University. When we look at the numbers of families reporting cash incomes below $2 per person per day in any given month, uh, it well more than doubles over a 15 year period. And when we look at the number of families who are, who are on food stamps, it actually quadruples. Emergency food assistance goes through the roof. Uh, so when all of these things are pointing in the same direction, so we walked into the plasma clinic down the street and just asked people, why are you here? What's going on? People have lost their jobs, haven't been able to find work. You know, uh, in many cases, it's going to be the only income coming into the household. It's their only option. We rejoined Mark at the entrance to the center. It didn't work out the way he wanted. The center refused him because his blood pressure was too high. I wasn't able to donate today with my blood. And, it, that's, uh, and that's very important because uh, 
uh, I take my blood pressure medication, and uh, I think I think I ate bad yesterday. But then, if you can't donate, it, it's a it's a financial issue for you. It is. It is. It is. Uh, uh, luckily, it's not life or death. It's it kind of has to do with uh, uh, not as vital stuff. So, but I might have to ask a friend for a loan. <laughs> you know, just for. You know, I mean, I'll take care of it soon, and I'll be able to, I'll be able to get my blood pressure straightened out, and that's why it is good for me to keep track of that. We accompanied him to a small subsidized apartment that he's been living in for a year. at home. When I had my stroke, it was about three years ago, I went into the doctors. To be quite honest, I was drinking a lot and I was doing drugs. And I was combining a lot of bad stuff, you know. So the next day I went to the Cleveland Clinic, which is one of our really good hospitals in Cleveland. And the word with people that don't have a lot of money is you get rated. And when you get rated, it may, means you can basically go there for free and get health care. And as we're qualifying, the lady doing it, she's like, oh, yeah, you're way below poverty level. I'm like, way below? You know, there's below and there's way below. So that was an eye opener. There are um, times when for, for my own self-esteem, I don't want to accept help. I want to be able to uh, to say, you know, no thanks, but no thanks. Doing Octopharma is kind of easy money, and uh, it's necessary. At least for me, it's necessary. It's a crotch party right up in here. For Mark and many other Americans, blood is his last source of income. If he got sick, he could no longer donate. He'd have no income. But all these blood donations are affecting his health. David Margolis is a doctor in one of the city's largest public hospitals. Yeah, Metro Health is the safety net system uh, for Cleveland. We take care of people regardless of their ability to pay. For a lot of our patients uh, and the people that we take care of at Metro Health, this is their, uh, one of the few strategies that they can use to get money. What um, does the literature say about the long-term effects of donating plasma on twice a week? I couldn't find anything in the literature describing what the effects were. Um, I know from talking to my patients who do donate plasma that they're tired, so they get fatigue, um, they have headaches. But beyond that, you know, all I know is the Red Cross has one time a month and these guys are doing it twice a week. Um, were to talk to this individual who's, who's donating, my patient, and he not, might not be able to afford a cell phone bill or rent, and that is more important for his health potentially than the downside effects of donating, because if he doesn't have a cell phone, he can't get a job, um, or he can't pay his bills, then, then you know, he'll freeze. So um, this is, the, this is the, the dilemma that we're in, yeah. What if you could earn extra money while doing something great for others? At Octopharma Plasma, you can. Not only are plasma donations vital to the treatment of rare, chronic, and genetic diseases, you could also... The USA is the world's main exporter of human plasma with 70% of the world market. Their success is based on a foolproof recipe. By building on this type of campaign, they nurture the image of a country with excellent sanitary conditions. The market is under the supervision of the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA stamp is a guarantee of quality, opening the doors to the international market. Each week, frozen plasma is dispatched in shipments, mainly to Europe. This is the other side of the American dream. Masses of poor people willing to sell their blood. 
they provide an unlimited pool of primary material. We wanted to understand the conditions in which blood is collected, 7 a.m. in Cleveland, in the parking lot of Okta Pharma. I can't do it no more. Best as y'all ask the other people. But anyway, I blacked out. I don't want to do that no more. I just small. And I didn't eat before I went in, but it almost killed me, so I don't want to do that no more. I got a job now, praise the Lord. This work. I'm providing a product. You know, I'm like a cow. I'm giving you milk. These stories illustrate the industrial pace and inadequate checks. However, Okta Pharma assures the authorities that there is strict donor monitoring. But if that's the case, why didn't the Swiss company let us enter? Why did they prevent us from talking to the staff? How are its donors selected? To check, we had to go and see for ourselves with a hidden camera. This is what we discover inside. Machines interrogate the donors. The volunteers answer the medical questions at electronic terminals. One single physical examination, measuring blood pressure. This is mainly to avoid the donors fainting while donating blood, which would slow down the entire chain. Not a single chair in the room is empty. An endless stream of donors with no time to recover after the donation. 12 hours a day, seven days a week. In view of such summary checks, everything is based on what people say. Paid donations entail a certain risk. They encourage donors to lie about their health. Such compensation also attracts a high-risk population that sometimes has secrets to hide. Yeah, like, they say, like, do you have yeah. best blood people with AIDS or something? You ever been to jail? Do you ever give me a test? Do you get blood or something? Weird questions, but it was basically you all know, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, it's a computer asking you. No, no, no. Who to say, though, if I was lying when I said my tattoos was over two years old? It looked like it's part of the bricks, but it actually ain't. It's where they miss, and it blew the vein up make you look like you're doing hair on the sun. And you know, like at the same time, I know people go over there, they getting the money, using it for drugs. But who am I to judge the next person? So last summer, the big thing around here is K2. And so, you know, it don't show up, in, even if they was to test them for drugs, it don't show up in your yarn. It's gonna give you that nice high for about three to five minutes, and then you chasing again. So. You know, you gotta wait till the next couple of days, back to Optima Plasma. It's free money. I give up this plasma so I can get that fixed. Everybody, I feel everybody wins. That's the way I see it. The people selling drugs, they are used to this. They love it because, simple fact, that means while Octa Pharma is there, even if, you know, even if it's somewhere else, they clientele got somewhere to go every time to make some money. Okay. Listen, you give me your card, your octoplasma card, and I'll give you a bag of Tunchi. Because I know when you go, it's going to get loaded on there. I'm going to make sure that you go, though, because I'm not going to take no type of losses. I'm going to drop you off in there. I'm going to drop you off there and make sure you get in, do your paperwork, and then I'm going to leave because I know. I know I'm going to get my money for sure. And when you're done, you can come back again. We'll do the same process again. I work hard at night. I'm a my dreams, it seems that my and this is how the blood business attracts the drug business and all that goes with it. Trafficking, exploitation, health risks for the donors. Is Okta Pharma aware of all this? We wanted to ask them if they noticed traces of drugs in their donor's plasma. But it's still impossible to get access. Tensions rise. The security services asked us to leave, which we did. Why was our presence bothering them so much? They don't like us to interview their donors. Yeah, man, you know why? Because they y'all doing something that they doing, something they ain't doing right. Okay, I don't know what the hell's going on, but for you guys to be out here professionally with your cameras, to interview this place. I mean, what do you got to hide? 
we're doing a TV documentary about plasma and plasma donors. Their, their complaint, they, they call it a complaint that if they felt like you were harassing the, harassing the donors coming out. Management just advised that they want you guys advised of trespassing, which means if you walk onto the parking lot, they will have their security sign charges against you guys for trespassing. Okay, okay that's fine. Very good. That's fine. All right, thank you. Thank sir. you very much. Thank you guys very much. Thank you very much. Back in Switzerland, there are many questions about compensation, exploitation, and concern about donors' health. Does all this affect the drugs we use? What control do we have over imported plasma? First of all, we wanted to see Tamara to show her our images. Last summer, the big thing around here is K2. It's bad as heroin. It don't show up, in, even if they was to test them for drugs, it don't show up in your yard. Okay. Wenn ihr Drogen braucht, geht ihr gut Plasma spenden. Ja. Also ja, wie gesagt, ich bin auch ein wenig geschockt. Also ja, ähm, die zwei, drei Geschichten, die sie nur machen, dass sie Geld haben, okay, ja, sie machen nichts Blöders. Aber die da mit den Drogensachen, die, das ist wirklich das ist heftig. Ja, aber es hat mich auch so beeindruckt, wie er liegen, um liegen, um liegen, eine Reihe um die andere, wie viele Leute es dort näher liegen. Das ist Wahnsinn. Wie viele Leute es für Geld viel machen. Ja. Du musst dir mal vorstellen, wie das der Körper schlaucht, zweimal in der ja. Woche, das geht geben. The Swiss Medic Experts reassured us that the plasma for Swiss drugs didn't come from paid donors. Also, wir erhalten vom Hersteller die, also eine ganze Dokumentation über, die, über alle Herstellungsschritte. Und da gibt er uns an, von wo dass das Plasma kommt, von welchem Land und ob das äh, bezahlte Spenden sind oder nicht. Und er muss hier deklarieren, dass es unbezahlte Spenden sind. Das würde sagen, dass das Produkt von den USA kommt. De dons non rémunérés. Genau. Wenn das heißt unbezahlte Spenden, das sind unbezahlte Spenden. Le don rémunéré est une industrie aux États-Unis. Ja, ja, ja. Aber das sind nicht, das sind nicht in der, die, das Plasma, das in der Schweiz verarbeitet wird, kommt das Spenden, die nicht bezahlt sind. Non rémunéré. In industry terms, the money paid to donors is compensation, not payment. A play on words. In Germany, for example, donors may receive a small fee, which is limited to three times a month. But the fees offered in the USA are much higher, enough to let the poorest survive. Mais on sait qu'à Cleveland, la plupart des centres de dons de plasma paient les gens pour donner leur plasma. Vous pensez vraiment das, que ça... Das weiß ich nicht. Kann ich. Also, das ist auch keine Information, die wir eigentlich prüfen. Was wir prüfen ist, äh, ob eben die, die Spendezentren, mhm. die jeweils aufgeführt sind, ob die der Zulassung, also dem plasma Masterfile entsprechen. Mhm. Das ist unsere Aufgabe. Das ist nicht unsere Aufgabe. The Plasma Master File, a several hundred page document in which the origin of the plasma is listed. Countless technical details, but nothing about the reality. Visibly, the Swiss medic experts don't know more about it. Vous avez déjà vu un centre de collecte de dons euh, aux États-Unis, de CSL par exemple, ou de Octa Pharma? Non. Vous savez comment ça se passe là-bas? Non. Next question, please. Does it make sense for the legislator to ask so few questions? The industry hides behind the trade secret, keeping the authorities in the dark. The socialist congressman J.F. Stiert is an expert in the Swiss health system. He finds the pharmaceutical industry's lack of transparency unacceptable. In general, an entreprise who sent that she commence to interesser un peu the politique et ou les médias, uh, soit elle se referme completely, but the risk d'attirer beaucoup de soupçons. Soit elle, elle est intelligente et elle commence à communiquer un petit peu ses données. Il faut des fois beaucoup de pression jusqu'à ce que ça marche. Opacity, profits, lack of monitoring. 
To what extent is public health at risk through this system? What threats does it pose to patients and donors? Jean-Daniel Tissot, Dean of the Faculty of Medicine of Lausanne University, has long been head of the city's blood center. Although he was generally reassuring, he pointed out the risks. Est-ce que d'un point de vue sanitaire, il y aurait une différence entre le plasma d'un Américain pauvre et, et celui d'un Suisse Alors, il n'y a aucun élément pour l'affirmer. Je ne pense pas parce que les contrôles qui sont faits ou les techniques de préparation nous permettent de nous assurer à l'heure actuelle que nous, on est capable de se débarrasser de tous les pathogènes. L'exception peut-être serait liée au prion, donc c'est cette protéine étrange qui est impliquée dans la maladie de la vache folle. Et là, les certitudes ne peuvent être mises sur la table. Zero risk doesn't exist. En France, un scandale à propos du sang, c'est l'événement du As we are reminded by the scandal of contaminated blood that hit Europe, including the Swiss Red Cross and France. Dans ces locaux, on traitait le sang collecté destiné aux transfusions, un sang que l'on disait le plus sûr du monde. Mais en 1990, le scandale éclate, les responsables du CNTS sont poursuivis et condamnés pour avoir laissé écouler durant plusieurs mois des stocks de produits contaminés par le virus du sida, provoquant ainsi la mort de plusieurs centaines d'hémophiles et de transfusés. After the scandal, sanitary checks were increased worldwide. The plasma pools are now cleaned using methods that are said to be highly efficient. Les solvants détergents sont parfaitement efficaces sur tous les virus les plus dangereux que sont ceux qu'on a nommés hépatite et sida. C'est assez clair. Jean-Jacques Huard is a hematologist in Lille. He's head of the blood center for the north of France, the largest transfusion center in France. He's one of the people traumatized by the blood contamination scandal. Il a été prouvé que la fréquence des pathologies est nettement supérieure en cas de don rémunéré. Alors, bien sûr, les tests sont là pour éviter tout ça, mais on peut imaginer qu'un nouvel agent infectieux puisse compliquer largement le le problème de l'innocuité. L'abomination. Non, c'est dégueulasse. Today, the checks are considered effective at least as far as known risks are concerned. But if there was a new virus slipping through, it could spread more quickly due to globalization. To reduce these risks, wouldn't the best way be for each country to produce its own plasma? That would be preferable, according to the World Health Organization. Self-sufficiency is definitely one of the aims that WHO uh, promotes in terms of uh, the goal that countries are trying to get to. The goal is not self-sufficiency solely for self-sufficiency's sake. It's because systems that are self-sufficient uh, tend to be safer and tend to provide better access. But there are many parts of the world that are not self-sufficient and have to depend on, on outside uh, sources for, for blood donation. And so, it, for us, it's an aim that, uh, that much of the world needs to work towards, but we're, we're not there yet. However much the WHO may state the importance of self-sufficiency, the world market isn't following. The USA is exporting more plasma, and soon Europe won't be able to do without this cheap raw material. In many parts of the world, they've made decisions to, and particularly in Europe and several countries, some Scandinavian countries, France, uh, are making decisions to uh, basically privatize or to move into a private uh, management of these types of, uh, of donation systems. Despite the checks being in place, the experts cannot rule out the possibility of a new virus. This fear for healthcare is a main feature of the news in France. In July 2015, Octopharma obtained the liberalization of the market the Swiss company was authorized to sell its plasma and the drugs derived from it to all French hospitals. Until then, the French blood center had had the monopoly. This intrusion is worrying Michel Montsellier, the director of the powerful Federation of Volunteer Donors. Oui. Il y a besoin de beaucoup de sang. Oui. Et il y en a combien de sang? 
Au niveau national, c'est 10 000 dons par jour. Et je veux ouais. dire, enfin, c'est suffisant pour combler le... Complètement. Okay. On est toujours autosuffisant, oui. Souvent, les collègues, ils disent on n'a pas assez de sang, on a besoin de donneurs, euh, tout ça. Enfin, moi, c'est le discours que j'entends. Il n'y a pas assez de sang, il n'y a pas assez de donneurs. Non, c'est faux. C'est faux. Euh... Aujourd'hui, on est autosuffisant en sang et on l'a toujours été depuis les années 50. Donc, il faut toujours renouveler le stock de donneurs, entre guillemets, parce que euh, entre le moment où vous donnez une première fois, on a 60% des donneurs qui donnent une première fois qui ne reviennent pas au deuxième don. Et au niveau du plasma, c'est pareil Le suffisant. plasma, alors le plasma, on n'est on on est pas autosuffisant pour une bonne raison, c'est que euh, c'est un marché qui est ouvert à la concurrence. C'est-à-dire C'est-à-dire que pour fabriquer des médicaments dérivés du plasma, on a des intervenants étrangers, ces intervenants qui sont des laboratoires pharmaceutiques, qui collectent eux-mêmes le plasma en payant les donneurs. Mais c'est illégal, ça En France, c'est illégal. En tout cas, ouais. Mais les médicaments qui sont fabriqués à partir de ce plasma être vendus sont en, en marché libre en France. Donc 50% aujourd'hui des médicaments dérivés du plasma proviennent de laboratoires privés fabriqués avec du plasma rémunéré auprès de donneurs étrangers, que ce soit en Allemagne, en Tchéquie ou au, principalement aux états unis D'accord. Le plasma, on ne considère pas forcément que c'est fait pour faire des médicaments. Non. Or, il y a des non, gens, il ouais. y a des gens, il euh, y a 500 000 patients en France qui vivent grâce à médic ces médicaments. Ah, oui. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous expliquer ce qu'Octapharma a changé C'est pas trop Octapharma qui a changé, c'est l'Europe qui s'est constituée. À partir du moment où on considère qu'une substance peut être qualifiée de médicament, euh, la liberté de passage d'un pays à l'autre euh, est, est acquise. On a très peu de temps. Je pense que maintenant, au deuxième semestre, on va rentrer dans le vif du sujet avec l'entrée sur le marché. Personne, je dis bien personne, malgré les affirmations qu'on nous fait aujourd'hui, n'est en mesure de nous prouver que le plasma qui va servir à fabriquer ce plasma solvant détergent provienne de donneurs bénévoles. Market liberalization, increased sanitary risks. What does Octa Pharma have to say in response to these fears? After many months of investigation and countless requests, the company still refuses any interview. We went to their headquarters located in Lachan, in the canton of Schwitz. I'm at the siege of Lachan. Et j'aimerais beaucoup vous parler. Ah voilà, je crois que j'ai des, des collègues à euh, vous qui, euh, qui arrivent là. Euh, donc je, je, alors, je vais parler avec eux. Et puis euh, je, je, je vous rappelle. Je vous rappellerai, mais je pense que cette attitude est vraiment très bien. Vous pouvez m'arrêter sur nos propriétés La seule chose à faire, c'est de laisser le building à ce moment. And then, uh, as Thomas uh, said, we will consider your questions and come back with a, with a, through, the appropriate, uh, through the appropriate channel. Okay, so you, you will answer my questions. We will answer your questions. You just said that. You will answer our questions. Upon the police's request, our cameraman left the premises. The head of communications asked us to ask our questions in writing, promising us he passed them on to the shareholders. Clearly, nothing is decided without the approval of Marguer, the founder and single owner of Octa Pharma. The company doors close to us once more. We had a long list of questions, not only with regard to the sanitary risks, but also the company's methods. On the plasma market, Octopharma isn't the most important player, but its sales have already reached 1.5 billion euros and are soaring. Its business practices have often roused the authorities' suspicions. Me politique au Portugal, l'ancien premier ministre socialiste José Socrates, qui a dirigé le pays entre 2005 et 2011, a été inculpé et incarcéré. Il dort ce soir en prison pour corruption et fraude fiscale, un scandale financier sans précédent. At the end of 2015, the former Portuguese Prime Minister was arrested for corruption. He allegedly received funds from Octopharma when he was a consultant in Brazil, where the Swiss company was involved in a huge case known as the Blood Vampire Scandal. 
Okta Pharma is suspected of bribing Ministry of Health officials. The case has still not been judged, and the company continues its activities in Brazil. Such political connections are worrying the French Donor Federation. Mosellier has first-hand experience of the Swiss company's sensibility over this matter. Ma relation avec Okta Pharma a été un, un peu difficile en ce sens que euh, nous nous sommes étonnés de la remise de la Légion d'honneur à Wolfgang Marger par la ministre de la Santé, en l'occurrence Rosine Bachelot à l'époque. Et euh, M. Marger a décidé de porter plainte contre nous, la fédération, euh, contre moi personnellement et mon collègue euh, président de la fédération à cette époque-là, pour avoir porté atteinte à son image personnelle et à l'image de ses entreprises. Donc on a vu débarquer à nos domiciles six personnes, un huissier, un officier de police, deux gendarmes, un serrurier et un informaticien pour aller voir dans nos ordinateurs si nous ne portions pas atteinte à l'intégrité et à l'image de M. Marguerre et de ses entreprises. Il y a eu un procès à la 17e chambre correctionnelle de Paris et M. Marguerre a été débouté de sa plainte et a été condamné à, 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 aux dépens du procès. De quoi il avait peur précisément bah, De peur d'une de, 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 perte de chance en matière commerciale, c'est-à-dire de dire que ce, ce que l'on avançait n'était pas forcément exact et que ça pouvait porter atteinte à, en, en termes commerciaux au développement de ces entreprises. Quand nous avons visité les headquarters, Octopharma a promis des réponses à nos questions. Un few weeks later, le chef de communication nous a informé que none of them would be answered without explaining why. There was only one solution left. Travel to Heidelberg, Wolfgang Marger's home. Ja, guten Morgen. Ich möchte mit Herrn Wolfgang Marger sprechen, bitte. Wer sind Sie? Ich bin François Pillet, ich bin ein Journalist. Hallo? Hallo? Wolfgang Marger was incommunicado. He asked the police to let us know. Guten Tag. Ich möchte Sie bitten, dass Sie die Kamera wieder ausmachen. Ja. Können Sie sie wieder ausmachen? Et il demande d'éteindre la caméra. Yes, uh, please. Wir sind so our questions will remain unanswered. The origin of the plasma, its payment, the risks linked to donor poverty, drug detection, and the likelihood of new epidemics. Why doesn't Dr. Pharma provide any answers to the questions of Tamara and thousands of patients? Cleveland sidewalks, these questions seem derisory. Selling their plasma will always be a lesser evil to those with no choice. For as long as people in Europe and elsewhere need plasma, the pharmaceutical industry will meet their demand. This America, everything is a big corporation out here. And without money, nothing moves. You see, when the market crashes, everything shuts down. No government checks. So what can we do? Optoplasm might still be running. Let's go get a couple dollars out of them right quick. Tap this arm real good. Let's give them what they want so we go get what we want. Oh, fuck. Mark was relieved. He could finally give his plasma, and he received $20. How was your blood pressure? It was pretty good. I wrote it down. It, it was less than yesterday. So, you know, it was 129 over 82, which is pretty good. Okay. What are you going to do now? Do you want to go home and rest? Yeah, I pretty much want to take it slow. I don't know. I was thinking about maybe go home and regroup. Might take a quick power nap. 
<laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Mark and Tamara are connected by an invisible thread. The plasma industry means their distress is inseparable. Wenn man Kollegen will treffen, sicher genau, dann geht es einem nicht gut. Entweder ist man krank oder man hat so Schmerzen, dass man dann nicht gehen kann. Aber die Familie ist immer da und das ist das Wichtigste für mich. Und finalement, c'est l'exploitation de l'homme par l'homme. Le terme qui est utilisé par certains, c'est le nouveau cannibalisme. Et si l'on n'est pas prudent et qu'on accepte une dérive éthique par rapport à ce que c'est que le don, le bénévolat, si l'on accepte de marchander le corps, alors euh, oui, on est capable de tout faire. The shift is already a reality. The blood of the poor going into the veins of the rich. Go get your brother,